not your um, you can look at whoever's asking me first. Um, obviously not your debut, but your Rangers debut. Was it nice to get out there for the first time with this team? Uh, yeah, it was good. I know when they picked me up last year, I was looking forward to this day. So uh, I'm happy it went pretty well for the day I've had. So. All right. So tell us about, you know, kind of it's got to have been a crazy day. Tell us about your day. Uh, wake, waking up at six to go from Vegas to Tacoma and then got told not to get onto the flight as we were boarding because there was a chance I'd come here and then kind of just turned into trying to find my flight, almost missing the flight to come here because Southwest lady told me to go to a different gate because there's two flights going to Chicago at 1010. And so first time I had to run through an airport to try and make a flight, so that was fun. And then didn't get to eat much, landed at six, got here at 630 or so, and then Played catch in the bullpen, had a granola bar, and then went out there. <laughs> so for the day it was, it was, uh, it was a pretty good outing. Were you rattled? No, not really. Uh, I was just kind of just going with it. You know, sometimes you have to deal with this type of stuff with travel-wise. So, How do you feel about your outing then? Uh, considering all of that, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, happy I got some soft contact, a lot of early contact, and uh, ground balls were nice. Yeah, uh, a lot of soft contact and just one... One bad uh, inning was just uh, start yanking a few fastballs away to guys and a couple walks here and there, but next time be a little better. It's already blown my mind with this travel story. I had, I had yeah, it questions was, and now I've forgotten all of them because I'm yeah, just it was a little tough. through the airport. Oh, full, yeah, full sweat, everything. Last one on the flight, there's like two minutes left that they're calling my name at the top saying you have five minutes. So. It was, I was at like B-17 for the one flight that was going to Chicago at 1010. And then they scanned my ticket and said, this is the wrong flight, even though I was going to the same spot. And then uh, when I looked it up, they're both leaving at 1010 and I had to go from B-17 to C-9 after going from Alaskan airline to find Southwest and Vegas airport. And then, yeah, it was, Running, running through was a little bit. I turned the corner and it was like C9 to C23, and then C23 was the first one. I was like, oh god, I'm gonna have to run all the way to the very end of the gate. So you got warm about seven hours early for your. <laughs> yeah, I got my conditioning in pretty early, and then sat on a four and a half hour flight to come here, and then got here, uh, and then immediately started stretching out, and then a little bit of granola bar, a little bit of food beforehand, and then the first inning happened and we had to walk out to the bullpen. Have so. you eaten yet? No, no, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, just powering through it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should let you go eat and we'll talk to you tomorrow. You good? Yeah. Nate, what do you make of this string of games where you guys are in it and close and it just hasn't gone your way? Just a couple of bad bounces. Um, you know, we haven't done a great job of controlling momentum and, um, you know, in a place like this where things get loud and they can get out of hand, and we saw that tonight, and, you know, that's just part of it, part of growing up as a team and part of what we need to learn to get better. You're hitting the ball well. You have been on a string and again lately and again tonight. How do you feel like you're seeing the ball right now? Seeing it fine. Um, you know, there's still a couple areas. Runners in scoring position, i got to get better, and, you know, it's uh, just part of what it takes to, to be a contributor on a winning team. Is it frustrating? I mean, when you guys are in these and then that eighth inning just kind of spun out of control? Yeah. Um, you know, when a play is happening five feet in front of my face and I, I watch it turn into what it turns into, it, a part of that doesn't really sit well with me. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a team game and there are eight other guys on the field that are doing their part, but I, I take a lot of blame for, for what happened there, letting it get out of hand, and we just got to come back and fight tomorrow. How great is it then to have a day game tomorrow? You don't have a lot of time to sit around and think about it. It's great. You know, I, Chicago's a good place to play. There's a lot of energy. It's a good team over there. We got a really competitive team, and you know, hopefully we'll bounce back and play our game tomorrow. I know you know, all three runs today came via home runs, solo shots. 25 of your guys' last 30 runs came from home runs. I guess, is it encouraging that you guys are hitting you know, home runs as well as you are, but also at the same time, just without getting guys in scoring position? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to see guys drive the ball, but um, you know, I, I, it's been a phrase for a long time that teams live and die by a long ball. So if you know we stop hitting homers for a while, we gotta we gotta create runs however we can create them. And you know if it, if the game calls for different things, then we have to evolve as a team and play a different game. When you guys are struggling with runners in scoring position, does that enter in your mind a little bit more as you step into the plate when you when those situations come about? Uh, you know you try not to let it happen, but it, I'd be lying if it said it doesn't. Um, you know it's. 
but that's part of what happens. Sometimes you press and sometimes things don't get done. And when you're rolling and getting guys in, it's, it's not really a thought. So, you know, if we get in the groove as a team, things will start to turn in the right direction again and probably won't think about it at all. Is, is hitting with runners in scoring position a, a talent or a skill? Yeah. Or just the same as hitting? I think so, yeah. You know, um, when you're playing one on the one on eight and the guys are all in front of you, it's a, it's a different game. But, you know, when you get to play a smaller game inside the game, it's a, a different level of hitting, I think, a different level of offense and something that uh, as a team we should definitely get better at. What do you think about the bullpen tonight? For us? Yeah. They compete every night. You know, they, they put the ball across the plate. Um, like I said, I, I didn't pick up John there on that play. And there was another double play ball that I didn't take care of. And, you know, they're going out and doing what they can every night. And we just got to put up more runs for them, give them a little more a little more comfort. Uh, yeah, it was, I mean, we were obviously put in a tough spot losing your starter. But, uh, you know, I, I thought our pitching, you know, Tyson Miller and some of those guys that came in, and they did a good job. They kept us in the game. Um, you know, Bushy kind of got us going. You know, Richards, uh, we just did a couple of mistakes, you know, didn't make some plays. Um, a little sloppy there at the end. Um, led to five runs in the eighth inning. But overall, we were right there in it, um, able to get a, get a run across the board on a really good pitcher in Graveman. And you know, we were kind of set up there. But uh, you know, just like I said, those little mistakes are, are costly. Yeah, let's talk about that eighth inning. How did they start to get to John King there? And you talk about mistakes. But what, what happened there in the eighth? Yeah, I mean, the, the obviously, two outs and you know, a little dribbler that you know, with not a really good runner. Um, that's a play we, we obviously got to make. But even after that, you know, I think the thing that's been plaguing King is just, you know, when when, when he gets in trouble, the ball starts elevating. Um, when he's down in the zone, when that sinker is down, and you know the cutter and the slider and the changeup are all you know down in the zone, he's probably the most effective guy in baseball. It's impossible to get him off the ground. Uh, but lately, you know he's been running into trouble, and you know a lot of those those, those sinkers are just kind of elevating. And you know, the pitch to ground all if it's down in a way, he's probably a weak ground ball, but left it up and in on him. We've talked about how close these games are. Tonight's score doesn't really show it, but this was another one of those just one run close games down to the finish. You just hope at some point it just starts to flip in y'all's favor. Yeah, we got to we got to make plays. Um, we can't expect to win those games if we're going to make mistakes like that, and we got to kind of win the game. Um, you know, something we talk about a lot. But, um, tomorrow's a new day. Obviously, we're going to hopefully be in a situation like that again and um, come through. I mean, we had opportunities. We had opportunities. We had guys. I thought Adolis' uh, stolen base, he worked really hard against Graveman there to get that bag. That was one of the best sequences I've seen a base runner have. It was, he was making it really hard on him, but you can tell Graveman was, was rattled a little bit um, with Adolis out there. Left a lot of balls up for Cole to hit. Um, we obviously just didn't take advantage of it, but uh, you know, we're putting pressure on him. We're just, we're just not getting enough traffic on the bases, I feel like. Some of our bats are a little bit empty right now. Thanks, Woody.